Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you for your word, it is the truth, and we do receive it written in our heart, written in our mind, thank you for the revelation of it. We will be hearers and doers of it, and we thank you for all that you're accomplishing in our life, in Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. We've been talking about a lot of important messages. We're seeing you grow up in all things, increase, abound, come to the place of walking uprightly before him, go on to perfection to be the holy church get filled with the fullness of God, enter into all the things that God has for you, come to the place of running after Him and seeking Him with everything within you, putting away all the things of this world, everything that is not of Him, conquering all sin, many things that we brought forth. Well, today we're going to bring forth another important message, and that is that you must be in the fear of the Lord always. It is mandatory for every Christian. Proverbs 23, 17. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. That's the way you live every day. You are to be in the fear of the Lord. When we talk about the fear of the Lord, it means exactly what it says, the fear of the Lord. Now, why would we want to have the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is knowing the fact that God's word is the truth. When you obey, you'll be blessed. But if you disobey, curses are going to come because spiritual law rules and God is not going to violate his word for anybody. His word is the truth. It's almost like thinking of it this way. From a natural example, the police. You'd have a fear of the police if you're breaking the law and you're doing what's wrong because you know you're going to be in trouble. But there's no fear as far as, far as a problem thinking that you're going to have any repercussions or bad coming on to you if you're walking in line with the laws and you're doing what's right. At the same time, you know that if you go contrary to it, you're going to be in trouble. It's really the same thing. God's word is true. You walk in his ways, you're going to be blessed. You're going to have no problems. In fact, you're going to see a personal relationship develop with him. You're going to walk in his ways and see God accomplish great things in your life. But you go contrary to his word. God's a righteous God, and he cannot violate his word. Its curses will come upon a person. Judgments will come. He's a God of love. But he's, always, he's a God of mercy. But he's also a God of judgment. He's a just God. He is righteous. He will only do what is right. What is the fear of the Lord? The scriptures tell us many things about it that we must understand. In Proverbs, or Psalms 19, Psalms 19, verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean. This means it's something that's pure. Enduring forever. It remains. It continues. God's fear is always here. It is clean, holy, pure. It's always going to be in line with holiness and the way of the Lord. He's always going to do what is right. Psalms 33, verse 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Everybody on earth is to fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. This shows a, an aspect of what the fear of the Lord will cause in your life. It will cause you to stand in awe of him. He is God. He is the one who is over all. His ways are perfect. And you will stand in awe of him. He is a holy God. He is a righteous God. He is a God who will do great things. But he's also a just God, and he is a God of judgment. Stand in awe of him. The entire earth is to have the fear of the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, The fear of the Lord is a beginning of knowledge, as Young's brings out. There's no definite article in the, in the Hebrew here. It's a beginning of knowledge. When you know that God is over all, and his word is what runs everything, and you know that if you walk in line with his word, you'll be blessed. But if you don't, you're going to be cursed. You want to know his word. You want to get knowledge. So you know how to walk in the ways of the Lord and follow the way that is going to bring blessing in your life. So we want to get knowledge. We want to know his ways. We want to know how, how the enemy would try to work against us. We want to know how we can conquer sin. We got to get the knowledge of God and the fear of the Lord Understanding the truth will cause you to want to get the knowledge of God. It is the beginning of you seeking after the knowledge of God. 
in Proverbs 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is also the beginning of wisdom. You're going to get wisdom because you walk in the ways of the Word of God. You get spiritual understanding. You get spiritual wisdom so you can walk uprightly before Him all the days of your life. We see over in Proverbs 15, verse 33. It says, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. It's the instruction of wisdom. Or this really can also refer to the discipline and the correction of wisdom. A more, more than likely instruction, but also when he instructs us, he'll also discipline and correct us if we're not walking right before him. Because again, the fear of the Lord shows you, you walk with God, blessings come. You don't, uh, you're going to have... You're going to have calamities. You're going to have repercussions that are going to come because of violation of his word. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, tells us something. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. God wants you to hate evil. He wants you to love righteousness. He wants you to love what he loves. He wants you to hate what he hates. God hates evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And he starts listing things out. Pride. You need to hate pride. Pride is what caused the devil to fall. You've got to get rid of all pride, selfishness, I, 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 me, me, me attitudes. Arrogancy. Exalting yourself. No, you humble yourself. The evil way. We cannot ever walk in the evil way. We must walk in the righteous way. The froward mouth. This is a perverse mouth that would be speaking anything that's contrary to the way of the Lord. He hates these things. The fear of the Lord causes you to have a hatred of these things because you do not want to walk in any of these things whatsoever. Over in Job 28, verse 28. Unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is the wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. You gain an understanding of what's right and what's wrong, you're going to definitely depart from evil because you know what's going to happen if you walk in the ways of evil. You're going to give place to the devil. You're going to see destructive things come upon you in your life. So the fear of the Lord is pure. It's holy. It'll cause you to stand in awe of Him. It'll inspire you to obtain knowledge and get wisdom, get instruction of wisdom, and to hate what is evil so you don't do any evil in your life. You get rid of all the pride. You get rid of all the arrogancy. The, you get rid of anything that is not of the Lord in your life. We see over in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. Honor all men. This is how we treat people. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. And we're all supposed to honor the king as well. We're to have the fear of God. The fear of God is a command, imperative mood. And it is a present tense verb, which means you are continually to be having the fear of God in your life at all times. When you have the fear of God, you won't walk in sin. When you have the fear of God, you'll walk in His ways. And you will believe His word. You will do all that He commands you to do. And you will see God's blessings come when you walk in the fear of the Lord. Of course, what's the problem with the world out there? Yeah, they have a major problem. Just look at the things that they do and what's going to happen to them. Psalms 36, verse 1. The transgression of the wicked saith within mine heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. No fear of God. He'll just do whatever he wants to do. Walking in the ways of sin, not realizing the repercussions that come. You cannot walk in sin and think that you're going to get away with anything. It's not going to happen. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 19. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. Anybody that backslides, anybody that draws back or turns away from the Lord does not have the fear of God before them. If they had the fear of God before them, they would never turn away from the Lord. And here he talks about the backsliding to reprove you, and these ones had forsaken the law, forsaken the Lord. Why? His fear was not in them. 
The fear of the Lord is into every, be in every single one of us. In fact, if the fear of the Lord is not in you, there is trouble. It says in Genesis chapter 20, verse 11, Abraham said, Because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they'll slay me for my wife's sake. Of course, he lied, which was wrong. He should have trusted the Lord. He thought that they were going to take his wife and kill him, and steal him because she was a beautiful girl. But notice he says, the statement he makes is, the fear of God's not in this place, they'll slay me. Otherwise, if the fear of God's not here, they'll be doing evil. That's right. If you don't have the fear of God in your life, you will end up doing evil yourself. That's right. We cannot have any evil going on in our life. You need the fear of God. And here's God's indictment against man that we see in Romans chapter 3. We see beginning in verse 10. As it's written, there's none righteous. No, not one. None that understandeth. None that seeks after God. They're all gone out of the way. They're together becoming profitable. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat's an open sepulcher. With their tongues they've used deceit. A poison of apse is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, of course, because of all the evil they've done. The way of peace they've not known. There's no fear of God before their eyes. That is the problem with man. Every person must have the fear of God. But when you come to the Lord and be born again, you must have the fear of God before you. You can't be born again and then not walk with the fear of God. There's going to be problems that are going to come. What must you do to have the fear of God in your life? The Word reveals what we should be doing. In Proverbs chapter 2, My son, if you will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, because you keep the commandments of God before you, and keep the word in your heart, so that thou incline thine ear into wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. Remember, we're to get wisdom and get understanding. If thou criest after knowledge, if you lifted up thy voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hid treasures, then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. We did that series on knowledge and understanding and wisdom recently. So important for you to see what the Word says about all that. And notice, when you go after all these things, as it says, it says here, get the word in you, keep the commandments before you, be listening, applying your heart, wisdom, understanding, seeking, crying after knowledge, lifting up your voice, praying for understanding, seeking for silver, searching. It's your whole, it's your whole motive of everything you do, where your focus is. Then you understand the fear of the Lord. In other words, you've got to put God's first word first place in your life. If God's word is first place in your life, and you are being a hearer and a doer of it and seeking after him, you will understand the fear of the Lord and you will find the knowledge of God. We see over in Psalms 34. Psalms 34, another point about how you can get the fear of the Lord, you're going to be taught the fear of the Lord as you're taught the scriptures. Psalms 34, 11, Come, you children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. God teaches you the fear of the Lord through His Word as He's bringing revelation to you. In Deuteronomy, there is much that is said about the fear of the Lord. And we'll be looking at many scriptures for a few moments here. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 10, He said, Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together. I will make them hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. We're to be gathered together. We're to hear his words. The result is we're going to learn to fear him all of our days. That's what needs to be done. We need to be hearing the word of God. We see in Deuteronomy 13, 11, All Israel shall hear and fear. Again, as you hear the word, it will bring the fear of God to you. 
and what's going to be the result? You shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. In chapter 17, in verse 13, all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously or in proud rebelliousness. This is also referring to arrogantly. No, you'll cut that out when you have the fear of the Lord before you. In verse 19, it shall be with him and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. As you read the word, you're getting the word in you all the days of your life. You learn to fear the Lord and you'll keep it and do it. That means the guy who's the hearer and the doer of the word, that's the guy that's going to learn to fear the Lord. The guy who doesn't spend time in the word, he's not going to learn to fear the Lord. He also must be a doer of it, of course. In Deuteronomy 19, verse 20, those which remain shall hear and fear. We see this hear and fear time after time. The hearing precedes the fear of the Lord and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you. You won't walk in sin if you're hearing the word of God and having the fear of God before you. Deuteronomy 31, we come down to verse 12. Gather the people together, men and women and children, not just the adults, but also the children, and thy stranger that's within thy gate. It doesn't matter whoever they are. Get them all together, that they may hear, that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law. You're going to hear, you're going to learn the ways of the Lord, it causes the fear of God, and you're going to be a doer of it. And that their children, which have not known anything, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. Don't think that your children can't learn these things. You need to start teaching them and teaching them consistently. They need to learn day after day after day. As long as you live in the land where you go over to Jordan and possess it, they're to learn to fear the Lord just as well. And they're going to be learning little bit by little bit. You just spoon feed them as much as you can, little bit by little bit, but they need to be taught the Word of God. Do not ignore them. Over in Deuteronomy chapter 5, Verse 29, look what he says here. Oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me. That shows you the fear of the Lord is something that's of the heart. It shows you have a right heart with God. People that don't have the fear of God, their heart's not right with them. It doesn't matter what they tell you. Their heart is not right with them. And keep all my commandments always. And notice, here's a blessing that comes because when you have the fear of the Lord and you're doing what he says, the blessings are going to come, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. That means it's going to be well with you and also with your children because you have a heart that will fear God and you'll keep the commandments of the Lord, which is what he wants. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them. Remember, we're taught things, so we do them. Not just so we get some knowledge and no facts. No. Everything that you're taught, you're supposed to be a doer and put it in operation as you go in the land to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God. Of course, that'll be the result. To keep all his statutes, his commandments, which I command to you, thou and thy son and thy son's sons all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. There's another promise. The days might be prolonged. That has to do with you having long life. Verse 24. The Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always. It's always for your good. God never tells you to do anything that wouldn't be for your good. He always wants to bring blessings or to keep you out of harm's way. That he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. He'll keep you alive. In Deuteronomy, again, much is in Deuteronomy about the fear of the Lord. In verse 6, Therefore, chapter 8, verse 6, Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Again, you get the word, you keep him, you walk in his ways, you got the walk, not the talk, and you have the fear of the Lord before you. This is actually what God requires of us, as we see in Deuteronomy 10, 12. Now Israel, and we are the spiritual Israel today, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? but to fear the Lord thy God. First thing, 
to walk in all his ways, to love him. Actually, the fear of the Lord is before loving him, isn't it? Fear the Lord, walk in his ways, love him, serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. We should have the fear of God first, then everything else will come in line because we'll put the word of God first place in our life. Deuteronomy 13, verse 4. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and cleave unto him. He keeps pouring this truth into them time after time after time, drilling it into them. Well, that means it needs to be drilled into us. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. Thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn, thy wine, thine oil, that's all the prosperity that they had, and the first things of thy herds and thy flocks, the first fruits of those, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Being a tither causes you to learn the fear of the Lord. Why would that be so? If you tithe, blessings will come. If you don't tithe, curses will come, because God says you rob God, you've robbed Him, you've robbed the whole the church, and you're going to see all these curses come upon you. You're cursed, He said, with a curse. We must learn to fear the Lord as you're being a tither, give, doing the things that God wants you to do. In Genesis chapter 22, Here's where God told Abram, Abraham at this point, and, and Isaac, to, he's going to take his son up there and offer him up before him. And when he gets up there, he has his son laid there on that altar, stretched forth his hand, took the knife to slay his son. The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad. Neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know. That's quite a statement. Now I know that thou fearest God. That means God doesn't know what you're going to do. Some people think God knows he's going to know everything you're going to do in any situation ahead of time. Well, this destroys that. Now I know that thou fearest God. Otherwise, God finds out what you're like if you obey him and whether you carry it out. Now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. God sees that you have the fear of God by what you do, by your obedience to him, by carrying out the things that he tells you to do. And that is so important. We see over in Genesis 35, God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. Dwell there. Well, that's telling us, come to the church, house of God, corporate house of God, where we're all are. We are the individual temple, of course, but the corporate house of God, where we come to hear the word, dwell there. Make there an altar unto God. That's where you worship God. He wants you to be a praiser and a worshiper that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face, face of Esau, thy brother. Jacob said to his household, dwell there with him. Put away the strange gods that are among you. Get rid of all the idolatry. Get rid of anything that's not putting God first place in your life. Be clean. You've got to get clean and get pure. Get rid of all the sin. Get rid of all the iniquity. Get rid of all the evil spirits. Get rid of everything that's evil. And change your garments. You've got to put on the right things. Get rid of the filthy garments and put on the things of God. Put on the word of God in you. Let us arise and go to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way that I went. So he's going, he's chasing after God, seeking after him. They gave unto Jacob all the strange gods that were in their hand and all their earrings that were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. They get rid of all this evil stuff. And they journeyed, and the terror of God or the fear of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. That tells you something. When you seek God and you obey God and you walk after Him and you are praising and worshiping Him and you get rid of all this evil stuff out of your life, the fear of God will be upon your enemies. And said they didn't even pursue after them because they were walking in the ways of the Lord. God wants you to get rid of everything. Get clean, get, get a change of garments. 
get the Word of God in you so you have the mind of Christ and you put on all these things, put away all the, the old man things and put on the new man and all the things that the Word of God declares. Exodus chapter 1, verse 15. The king of Egypt spake to the he Hebrew wives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, Shifra and the other was Pua. And he said, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. They wanted to kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They weren't going to do what he said. And did not, as the king of Egypt commanded them, but save the men children alive. God wants you to never obey anybody that tells you to do anything that's contrary to the word of God. Anybody out there in the world? Or, no, you're always going to do what is right. They had the fear of the Lord. And that was important because it came to pass. Because the midwives feared God, he made them houses. He made them dwelling places. They got blessed because they wouldn't obey and do what was wrong, even though they were directed by the king. You never do what anything, any law or anybody in any position of authority that tells you something contrary to the word. Never. Here, they feared God and God made him houses. And that tremendous blessings come because of obeying God and doing what he says. We see something else in Exodus 9, verse 27. Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said unto him, I've sinned this time. Oh, he confessed his sin. We've seen lots of people, they confess their sin. And they keep confessing their sin. They go back and do the same thing. They confess their sin. The Lord is righteous, I and my people are wicked. He says, yeah, we're bad people. Entreat the Lord, for it is enough that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail, and I'll let you go and you shall stay longer. Just cut this judgment stuff out. I'll let you go. Everything will be fine. <laughs> Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord. The thunder shall cease, neither shall be there any more hail, that thou mayest know how the earth is the Lord's. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that you will not yet fear the Lord God. Why was that? Because he knew he'd go back and do the same thing again. You can confess your sin, but if you go back and do it again, you don't have the fear of God before you. You're just giving lip service and think that that's going to make, come, come out anywhere. It goes nowhere. Evidence is godly sorrow that works true repentance. If you really are turning away from sin, you will run from it and you will stay away from it. He says, I know you won't yet fear the Lord. <coughs> that shows you the fear of the Lord is only shown in someone who has a true repentance and change. Anybody who sins and then says they, conf they confess their sin, and I'm a bad person, I did all these terrible things, and goes back and do it again, they do not have the fear of God before them. And what does that mean? They really have not repented. Well, they just did it to get rid of the judgment problem. Get this off of me, you know. See, a lot of people, they just want to get free of their problem. I see that happen with people in deliverance. They come, they want to get free of their pain or their problem or whatever it is, but do they really want to change their life and quit their ways? Well, they just get me, get me free of my problem, and then they go back to the same old thing. That's why we always say, well, you, first of all, you're going to get the teaching down, and you're going to learn that you've got to correct every area in your life, as well as casting out the demons. It's not just get me free of my problem and go back to what I've been doing. No. We must have a true repentance in our life. That shows when you have, really have the fear of the Lord, you will repent and change. Exodus chapter 14 Verse 30, Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. When you see the works of God being done, it will bring the fear of God to you, and you will believe him, and you will trust in the Lord. The fear of God is a good thing. And you see the fact that God is a God who will smite the enemies and defeat the enemies. And we can trust in Him and believe in Him and know that He will bring forth victory for us. Exodus 20. We see another thing about the fear of the Lord. All these things are going to be important to develop all the things and, and show forth that you have it. Exodus 20, verse 20. 
Moses said unto the people, Fear not. This is a, a negative fear. Be not afraid. For God has come to prove you. He's come to test you. Always don't be afraid of God working in your life. He's coming for a good thing, see? He's coming to test you, to prove you, to try you. And you want him to test you and prove you and try you to find out whether there's any evil thing in you or not. And that his fear may be before your faces. Because when God comes to test you, he is going to find out whether you're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. He's going to bring his word to you and point out what is right. And if his fear is before your face, then you won't sin. But if you do not have the fear of the Lord, you'll continue to sin and he will find out that yeah, you're not the real deal. He's tested you and find out that you're lacking, you're wanting in some manner. No. God, we want God to come in our life and to prove us, to test us, to see that we are right with him. And we will have the fear of God and we will not sin. As the fear of God is before you, you'll quit sinning. Exodus 18, verse 21. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear God. These are the ones that are going to help in carrying out the ministry to the people. Men that fear God, first thing. Men of truth, that meant they're men of the word. Hating covetousness, they couldn't be bought or bribed or, you know, someone paying them off, you know, for some reason. And place such over them to be rulers over thousands, rulers over hundreds, rulers over fifties, rulers over tens. These ones could start ministering to these people because it was a, such an overwhelming uh, burden for uh, Moses to be carrying this out. But notice, who was qualified to do this? Men that fear God. Truth. Walking in the truth. Men of truth. Hating covetousness. Those are requirements in order to be in any position of leadership. Anybody that doesn't have the fear of God before him cannot be a leader. 2 Samuel 23, verse 3. God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth over men must be just, be righteous, ruling in the fear of God. That's what we must have in this nation. Long ago, when they had people, they had people that were Christians that were born again, who were in positions of authority. That's what it should be. You can't be in a position of authority unless you're born again and you have the fear of God and you're walking right with God. How far have we gotten away from that? Look at all these ungodly people we got in this nation in positions of leadership. Just ruling in the fear of God. That is what we need. People say, well, should Christians get involved in government? They sure should, because you want rulers to be just ones, righteous ones, having the fear of God. And that's only going to be Christians are going to do what is right according to the Word of God, according to, of course, in our Constitution, which is laid down on principles according to the Word. Second Chronicles 19, verse 6. And said to the judges, Take heed what you do, for you judge not for man but for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. You know, that destroys all the politicians today, doesn't it? You can't judge for yourself. You can't judge for your political preference. You can't judge because of what I think. You've got to judge for the Lord. He's with you in the judgment. Wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. These guys that don't have the fear of the Lord, they are in trouble. They're all going to hear a bad, bad report unless they repent. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity of the Lord our God, nor respect to persons, nor taking of gifts, which is bribes. All these guys are on the take. They've all been bought, and bought by the money interest, the special interest in all this. They're not righteous men. We have to get rid of them, you see. We've got to have righteous ones in positions of authority. Second Kings. Chapter 17. All these are important principles for you to have the fear of the Lord in you. Nobody should be able to buy you or bribe you or deceive you. 2 Kings 17, 28. Then one of the priests whom they'd carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. They came, they taught, came to the house of God. What did they teach them? They taught them how they could fear the Lord. 
Do we see that going forth on the, e e e the uh, TV and the radio and all these places? Most of what's out there is teach you how to prosper, how to be healed, how to all these things, and be sure to send me the money, you know. <laughs> what a problem. They should be teaching the fear of the Lord. Well, we don't talk about sin and the fear of the Lord and casting out demons, and that, that doesn't sell tapes and have people give us money, you know. But what an indictment against all those ones that are out there teaching the word. If they're not teaching the word and bringing the fear of God and the uncompromised word and leaving nothing out, that's what they should be doing, or they shouldn't even be on the airwaves. They should be off. No wonder so many Christians have got a bad name. They think all they're out for is their money, and that's a lot what they are. Look at what all they have, with their multiple houses, jets, cars, yachts, and all the different things. Nehemiah 1.11 O oh Lord, I beseech you, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant, to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper. God wants you to have the fear of the name of the Lord and prosper. And I pray thee that thou, thy servant this day and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. He had the fear, fearing his name, the fear of the Lord before him. We also see in Nehemiah chapter 5, in verse 14, Moreover, from that time I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah. In the 20th year, even in the 22 and 30th year of Artaxerxes the king, that's 12 years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. But the former governors that had been before men were chargeable unto the people and had taken of them bread and wine besides 40 shekels of silver. Even, even, yea, even their servants bear rule over the people. But so did not I because of the fear of God. Otherwise, he wasn't going to take, take, take. Anybody that's got that kind of attitude is in trouble. No, we don't want to be a taker. We want to be a giver. Nehemiah 7, 2. I gave my brother Hananiah and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem. Why did they get be put in positions of authority? For he was a faithful man and feared God above many. Faithfulness to do what God says and having the fear of God. You know you can trust this guy. He's not going to cheat. He's not going to get bribed. He's not going to lie. He's not going to, you know, turn away and not do what's right. He's going to follow the way that is right. Look at Job. Verse, chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. The man was perfect, upright, one that feared God, and eschewed, which means he turned aside and departed from evil. That's what we're to be. At perfect, upright, fear of God, turn away from evil. Verse 8, the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth, a perfect man, upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. Remember, this is where he was talking about how he was trying to, Satan was trying to come after him, to come and get him. Hast thou, this doesn't mean considered, it really means, literally, he set his heart against him. There's two Hebrew words here. One is for set, the other one is the word for heart. That's why Young's brings this out, as thou set thine heart. That's really what it's talking about. God was saying, hey, this, this guy, you set your heart against him, but this guy's a perfect, upright one who fears God and is turned away from evil. That's the type of person that God wants you and me to be. Over in Psalms, chapter 2, verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. If you have the fear of the Lord, you're going to want to serve the Lord. You can't be a selfish Christian. You can't be all out for me, me, me. You've got to want to be a servant, serving the Lord, doing the things that He wants you to do. Psalms 55. Verse 19. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old. Selah. Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. That's quite a statement. If you're not being changed with permanent changes, there's no fear of God. 
Because if you have the fear of God, you're going to take the word in here and do it. Repent, turn from it, walk in the right way, change your mind, not continue in the evil ways any longer. These people that say they're something, but they have no changes, and they continue to do the same old thing over and over, they don't have any fear of God before them. Those are the hypocritical guys. Those are the Christians in name only. <laughs> say they're something, but they're not. They're in trouble. If you have the fear of God, you will have changes. You should have had changes and continue to have changes in your life as you're growing in the things of God. If not, you're lacking the fear of the Lord. Psalm 72, verse 5. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure, endure throughout all generations. We're to have the fear of God all the days of our life, all the time, every way, every day, everything that we do. Psalms 86, verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Again, the way of the Lord, his way of his word, walking in his truth, the way of his word, uniting your heart, because remember, the fear of the Lord is something that's of the heart. Unite my heart to fear thy name. That's what God wants for us. Also, in Psalms 5, verse 7. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. You worship God having the fear of the Lord. People that don't want to enter into praise and worship, there's something wrong. They don't have the fear of God before them. You, don't want, you minister unto him, you should be ministering unto him. See, pride doesn't want to minister to him. It just wants to just get for me. What do you got for me today? No, you should come to give out. That's why. What's the first thing we do? Praise and worship God. Give out and minister unto him. Yeah. Sing unto him. Praise and worship him. You need to be a praiser and a worshiper of God. If not, you're not going to go too far. God ministers back to those who minister to him. Psalms 22, verse 23. Ye that fear the Lord, praise Him. God wants us to be praising Him. Every single one. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify Him. Fear Him, all the seed of Israel. Fear Him, praise Him, glorify the Lord. Psalms 96, verse 9. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before Him all the earth. That one psalm that we sing is all patterned after why you, how you worship him in beauty of holiness with the fear of God before him, before you. We worship him in holiness with the fear of God before us. He wants you to be one who enters in. Don't be one of those who's a spectator. Be one who enters in and prays and worship him, ministering to him. Don't just be going through the motion singing without putting your whole heart into it and thinking about what you're singing and ministering unto him. And when you're singing that song to him, to him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb, you should be thinking of him on the throne and the Lamb, you know, and what they've accomplished. Your focus should be there. When you were singing that, were you focused or were you out thinking something else? There's something wrong. Psalms 135, verse 20. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. Levi were the priests. Ye that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. All the priests were to bless the Lord. They were to have the fear of God. You and I are all priests. We're all to minister unto Him. To bless the Lord. To have the fear of God and to minister unto Him. That is what He wants. We see more. All these things are all important for you to have the fear of the Lord. Psalms 112, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delighteth greatly in his commandments. When the commandments are given to you, do you think, oh no, I got to do something. Oh, I have to do this. You should never think that way. You should delight greatly in the commandments of the Lord. Praise God. I know what God wants me to do. I'm ready to do it. With an a, a excited, exciting, excited heart, you know, ready to do what God wants me to do. I delight greatly in his commandments because I know they're the right way. I know they're going to bring blessings. I know it's going to keep me out of the way of the destroyer. I'm going to make sure that I'm walking in his ways uprightly before the Lord. Psalms 115, verse 11. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. 
If you have the fear of God, you will trust in Him because you know God, He's a performer of His word. He's faithful. You know He's you, you can trust in Him. You know He's going to bring things to pass. He's your help. He's your shield. Otherwise, if you really have the fear of the Lord, you're going to be focused on the Lord. He's going to be your source. It's not like I'm going to try God and try six other things too because I don't know if I can really trust Him. Well, you don't have the fear of God before you then. The fear of the Lord will cause you to trust in Him knowing that He is your help He's your shield against the enemy. Psalms 119, verse 63. I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. That's my, who I'm fellowshipping with or associating with. Well, that tells you something. Do you have, are you a companion with and fellowshipping with people that don't, aren't walking in the fear of the Lord? What are you doing? You're fellowshipping with the wrong people. That's a mistake. You should want to be around people that are walking in the fear of the Lord, walking in the way of the Word. Those that keep thy precepts, the ones that fear you and fear the Lord and keep the Word, that's who you're to be a companion of, associate with and fellowship with. Stay away from the ones that aren't walking right outside of just dealing with them in business relationships or in the way, you know, just in functioning. But that's not who you're going to be spending time with. That's for sure. Psalms 119, verse 20. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. You should be afraid of God's judgments. Why would God's judgments come? Because you do wrong. If you're not afraid of his judgments, then you don't think there's any big deal if you go ahead and do wrong. Oh, no. It is a big deal. Remember, if you sin willfully, there's nothing but a fearful looking for of judgment, as it says in Hebrews. Otherwise, we should have a fear of his judgments. Fear of his judgments will keep you from doing anything that will bring judgments upon you in your life. Psalms 128, verse 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. That means you're going to be blessed. Blessings will come on you in your life. That walketh in his ways. Again, who's the one who fears the Lord? The one who's walking in his ways. The guy who says, I have the fear of the Lord and is not walking in the ways is a liar, according to God's word. He's a hypocrite. He says one thing and does another. You aren't going to fool God, that's for sure. Evidence that you have the fear of the Lord is you walk in his ways consistently. Is walking. Not just, oh, I did it once. No, no. This is a participle active, which is like the present tense in the Greek, meaning he is walking. That's why Young's translates it, is walking. That means you're, on, you're ongoing walking in the ways of the Lord. Not all, sometimes, and then here I'm over here somewhere else. No. Consistency of your walk shows you have the fear of God in your life. Psalms 130, verse 4. There is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. You should have the fear of God before him, knowing the fact that if you do sin, I can confess my sin and God can forgive me so I can get back in fellowship with him and I can turn away from this and he will cleanse me so that I will not be giving place to the enemy and on the enemy's territory. You should have the fear of God. Praise God, he can, I can get forgiven. Of course, you should come to the place where you're not even sinning to begin with. But if you do, you have the fear of God you know that there's forgiveness. God will forgive you. It's not like you're doomed forever. But you better, you get forgiven and then you change your ways and turn away and not walk in it any longer. Psalms 139, verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Don't look at yourself and say, I don't like myself. That's a mistake. We're all fearfully and wonderfully made. You're made in the image of God. You should be working out your own salvation and correcting all the problems in your life. Don't look at yourself and think there's something wrong with me. No. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. The only things that would be wrong with you is what the devil's done in your life. Those things you need to kick out. Otherwise, don't be negative about yourself in any way and don't be comparing yourself to other people. You look at yourself through the Word of God and be everything that God wants you to be. 
You need to teach this to your children so they don't get the, this peer group pressure that affects them in school and they think they're not as good as somebody else. That takes them down, gets them all discouraged and, de and depressed and lots of them even get, they don't want to live, you know. A lot of crazy things happen to young people because we don't teach them the truth. We got to teach them the truth. You're fearfully, wonderfully made. God made you. You're in his image. You're fine. Just get walking in the ways of the Lord and get all the works of the devil out of your life and don't walk in sin. Walk and please him and watch God work in your life. Proverbs 1, 29. For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. That shows you the fear of the Lord is something you choose. You choose the fear of the Lord. See, you can ignore it. It means you're not choosing it. I choose the fear of the Lord because I know that the fear of the Lord is right and I know it's going to cause me to get right in every area and walk in his ways and seek all the things that I'm supposed to seek after as we've seen so many areas. So you're going to choose the fear of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Again, if you're wise in your own eyes, you start thinking, I'm something... Uh, there's a mistake. That's that old pride spirit. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. Get away from all these things. We see it over in Proverbs 16, also, verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Because again, you know, if I continue in evil, I am going to see judgments coming upon me in my life, and I cannot have that. We see over in Proverbs 14, verse 2. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord. Your walk, again, consistently, day after day after day, in his uprightness. You're walking in uprightness. You have uprightness of heart, uprightness in all you do. You always do things. You won't compromise on doing evil, uh, do evil things at all. He that's perverse in his ways despiseth him, though. If we're perverse, or we turn aside, we go crooked, we're not walking right, you can sit there and say, well, I don't despise God, but God says, you despise me. It doesn't matter what you say, it only matters what the Word says. This is the truth. If someone is perverse in his ways, turning aside, departing, not walking in the ways of the Lord, he despises God. He can say, I love you all he wants. It means nothing. Absolutely. Walking in his uprightness shows the fear of the Lord. And that's what God wants. Verse 16. A wise man feareth and departs from evil, but the fool rages and is confident. Eh, he didn't have the fear of God. He didn't think there's going to be any repercussions for it. There is. He's going down fast, that's for sure. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 14. Another important scripture. They're all important. Happy is the man that fears always, or blessed. He's blessed. But he that hardens his heart shall fall into mischief. So that means the guy who hardens his heart, he doesn't have the fear of the Lord. We should never harden our heart. Remember, sin hardens your heart. Anytime you're walking contrary to the way of the Lord and harden your heart, you don't have the fear of the Lord, and you will fall into some destructive thing. Proverbs 31 Verse 30. This is for all you women. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. Don't get all caught up in that. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. That is what you want. You want to be a woman that fears the Lord, that hears and does the word and walks in his ways all the days of your life. And you're not caught up with all these things in the worldly, natural way. You know. What's the world do? They want everybody to just, uh, all the beauty and all the look good, got to look good on the outside. Everything's got to be good on the outside. Usually they're miserable on the inside. No. We have the, should have the fear of the Lord. That means we're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. You're going to have the character of the Lord established in you. The fear of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. It's like a storehouse. It's going to bring blessings to you. Again, remember, fear of the Lord's tied in with wisdom, tied in with knowledge. 
all these things. So it's going to bring stability in your life. It's going to, it says it brings the strength of salvation. And it is your treasure. It will bring God's blessings, his storehouse of blessings coming unto you because you walk in the fear of the Lord. We see over in, in Jeremiah, chapter 32, verse 39. I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever. If you've got a divided heart, you don't have the fear of the Lord before you. You should have one heart tuned in for what God wants and one way, the way of the word. You can't be going this way and going that way and think you have the fear of the Lord. You don't. You're kidding yourself. One heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. Not only does it affect you, but it affects your children. It'll carry over to that. We've got to make sure we're walking right. One heart, one way. And I'll make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts and they shall not depart from me. If you have the fear of God in you, you'll never depart from it. You'll never backslide. You'll never turn away. Why do people backslide? Why aren't people consistent? Because they don't have the fear of God in their life. They're in trouble. That is for sure. Jonah. In chapter 1, verse 12. Look at this here. This is when Jonah finally admitted he was the problem of why they were having the storm coming against all them and the ship. He said, Take me up and cast me forth in the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you, for I know that for my sake this great tempest or the, the storm is upon you. Judgment was coming because of that. We'll get this guy that's the bad guy out of here. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not. You aren't going to get away from the judgments. The sea wrought and was tempestuous, tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried in the Lord and said, we, believe, we beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent, innocent blood, for thou, our Lord, hath done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth in the sea. And then the sea ceased from her raging. When you got the evil out, the judgment stopped. It means if you get the evil out of your life, that will... Be, get rid of the problems. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. When you see God's work, and you see God's judgments, and you see the change come when you cease from sin and you get right with God, you'll have the fear of God before you realize, I fear the Lord. He's God. I'm going to walk in His ways so I don't get destroyed. I'm going to walk uprightly before Him. And Hagehi, Talking about what's going to happen here, remember, in the end times. Haggai 1.12 speaks about the remnant of the people. What did they do? The remnant. They obeyed the voice of the Lord and the words of Haggai, the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent them. And the people did fear before the Lord. They obeyed and they had the fear of the Lord. That's what's going to be important if you're going to be able to stand and walk victorious in these last days. In the New Testament, there's some Tremendous, some pretty strong scriptures. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Look what it says. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who's able to destroy both soul and body in hell. <laughs> it's exactly right. By the way, when it talks about destroying the body and soul in hell, this is not talking about it gets wiped out and it's no more. It's talking about torment. The reason you know this is because here's the picture of the guy, remember, the rich man and Lazarus in hell. In Luke chapter 16, 23, in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus. He may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. He's tormented. By the way, when it talks about the body and the soul being cast into hell, he said, well, I thought our body went in the, body, in the ground. It's not talking about your natural, physical body. You have to understand, as the scripture says, there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. 
when you leave, you still have your spiritual body down in hell. Because remember, he was tormented. His, uh, uh, what he saw is in his tongue. There's a natural body, there's a raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. Say, so, well, what's going to happen? We're going to get a brand new spiritual body when we get raised up in the resurrection, praise God. But there is a spiritual body. These guys have a body, spiritual body down in hell. Their heights are, their senses are heightened and they experience this tremendous, not only in their soul, in their mind and emotion, but also in their body of torment in hell. So that's, that's why it says what it says about you'll be tormented in there. And we see over in Luke's account of this, Luke chapter 12, verse 5. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath authority, exousia, to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. People say God would cast someone into hell. That's right. That's justice. It's righteous judgment for people that have rejected him, have not walked in his ways, and have not done what he has said in his word. They're going to be cast out. He has authority to cast them into hell, and they are going to be in torment. That's why we got to walk in the fear of the Lord all the time. Remember, when you walk in the fear of the Lord, you're not going to be, you're going to be right with God. Acts 9, verse 31. Then had the churches rest throughout Judea in Galilee and Samaria. Why would they have rest? They must have been walking right. And they were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, and we're multiplied. As long as we're walking in the fear of the Lord, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and walking uprightly, of course, according to the Word, we can have rest. Praise God. And that's what God wants. Acts 10, verse 2, talking about Cornelius. A devout man, one that feared God with all his house, and he gave much alms to the people. He was a giver, and he prayed to God. That shows you. This is a devout man, is of someone who is a godly, devout person in what they do. They fear God. They're a giver to others. They pray to God. That shows someone who has the fear of the Lord. That's what he wants. Now, we can't have any of this pride stuff. Pride has to go. You cannot allow pride in your life. Romans 11.20, Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. They're talking about the Jews because they're unbelief. Now you're in, in faith. But then he goes on and says to the ones who are standing by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. Don't let yourself get proud, but have the fear of the Lord. People that have pride do not have the fear of the Lord. Get rid of all the pride. And then you will truly have the fear of the Lord. This is quite a scripture in 2 Corinthians 5. Knowing the fact that he has authority and he will cast people into hell who have not walked right with him and have rejected him. 2 Corinthians 5.11 says, there, Knowing therefore the terror, the fear of the Lord. Same word for it. As Young brings out. We persuade men. Well, we persuade them because if they don't receive the Lord, they're done. They're in torment forever. That's why we pray for them every service. We pray, we're going to be, we always will pray for people to be born again every service because we know they must be. We are made manifest, they're made, man, but we are made manifest in the God and trust also manifest in your consciences. The terror, the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. Don't be moved by what they think. Give them what they have need of. It doesn't matter whether they hate you or persecute you or going to, whatever they're going to think. Think about where they're going to end up. You don't want them to end up in hell. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. There having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. We have to cleanse ourselves. It's our responsibility. The filthiness of the flesh, all the sinful things, and all the filthiness of the spirit, all the evil spirits. What does that result in? Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In other words, showing you have the fear of God is to deal with all the sins in your life as well as casting out all the demons. These people will never perfect holiness in the fear of God if they don't come to the place of casting out demons. 
And we know most, most of the body of Christ has been taught the lie that we don't have any demons in us. Once we're born again, they've been deceived big time. They never can perfect holiness in the fear of God until they get all this uncleanness out of them, which includes the unclean spirits. That's why we've got to be involved in deliverance. The whole package. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Our attitude to people is submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Nothing wrong. That doesn't mean you're going to do what they say if they tell you something contrary to the word, but you want to be in submission. You don't want to have this high-minded attitude over people at all. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5, Servants, that would be an employee, be obedient to them that are your masters, your employer according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of heart, as unto Christ. You just do your work unto the Lord. We see over in Colossians' account, chapter 3, verse 22. Servants, employees, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service. Eye service means the fact that under the master's eyes, otherwise only when he's looking, you know, and otherwise I'll just get away with things. No. According to the flesh, you say, what about all these people that are getting away with things? They're going to be judged. Don't get an attitude. You do what's right. As men pleasers, but in singles of heart fearing God, you do everything unto the Lord. Everything. Whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, not unto men. And then also, you say, well, what if I got a real bad employer? He's a bad guy, doesn't, he's not fair, and he's a terrible person. 1 Peter 2, 18. Servants, employees, be servant to your masters with all fear. Not only to the good and the gentle or the fair and equitable, but also to the froward, to the perverse, unfair, cheaters, liars, whatever they might be. You do your work unto the Lord. God will bless you. Don't get an attitude towards employers. That is a mistake. We also see Hebrews chapter 4. Or no, I'm sorry. Yeah, Hebrews chapter 4, yeah. Verse 1. Let us therefore fear the fear of the Lord, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. That says, every promise, we're not to come short of any of them, we're to possess them all, to enter into his rest, and the fear of God, if it's before you, then you'll be seeking to enter into all these promises and possess them. That's how you enter into his rest. You should be. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Meaning, the word that you hear, you must mix your faith by working your faith to see the promise come to pass so you enter into his rest and you don't come short of any. If you're not doing that, you don't have the fear of God before you. There's something wrong. You should be seeking that, to enter into all of these promises that God has for you. Hebrews 12, verse 28. Wherefore, we receiving lamb, para lambano, taking near a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. That's what God wants. We're going to serve Him. Again, the serving of the Lord. You do what He says. This word here actually, when it's godly fear, is a different word to Greek. It really means taking hold well. It's a form of E-U, which means well, and this other word, which is not lambano, it's, it's a form of lambano in a different, different form. And it's, it's talking about taking hold well. That's what God wants. That's exactly what you see. The same thing is spoken of when it speaks about Jesus in Hebrews 5, 7. In the days of his flesh, when he offered up prayers, supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death. And he was heard, or given heed to, this word means, in that he feared. This is the same word, yulabaya, which means taking hold well. Jesus was taking hold well, following everything that the Father told him to do, and he was given heed to because of that. 
That means having the fear of the Lord is tied into your prayers getting answered, Him listening to you. You can pray all the right things and be or not right. He didn't hear you. Remember, the, prayers of the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, ears open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord's against them that do evil. You can pray all the things exactly right, but if you're not right, he didn't even hear you. Got nowhere. Otherwise, Jesus had to meet these conditions as well, and so do we. 1 Peter 1, verse 17. Look what he says. If you call on the Father who without respect to persons judges according to every man's work. He does. Pass the time of your sojourning, remember you're a sojourner from heaven, here in fear, in the fear of the Lord. You're simply being, going through this period of time. Heaven's your home. You belong to the Lord. You're a sojourner here in the earth, and you're to walk now in the fear of the Lord in everything you do. 1 Peter chapter 3. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, a husband that won't obey the word, they also may without the word be won by the manner of life, conduct, and behavior of the wives. Otherwise, if they won't listen to the word, show that you're walking in the way of the Lord, and that's the best thing you can do to try to win them to the Lord. While they behold your chaste, this is your holy, uh, clean, reverent, sacred, pure manner of life, conduct, and behavior coupled with fear. Otherwise, they see the fear of God before you. That'll help to win people to the Lord. When people speak to you and ask you questions, 1 Peter 3.15, Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that's in you with meekness and fear. Don't be afraid of them. Don't say, well, I better not say anything because they might not accept it or whatever all. No. You give them what God's Word says. Don't hold back. Tell them the truth. You know, we can't be afraid of man and not want to tell them something. That's a mistake. With meekness and also with the fear of God before you, you give them the answer, not holding anything back. Jude, verse 23. Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Why would I be having to pull them out of the fire, you know, and having the fear of God for these people with their garments spotted by the flesh? That means they're in sin. They're spotted. They're in sin. They're in the fire. They're in trouble. We want to pull them out. That's where they're going to end up in, with the fear of God. We want to pull them out. Otherwise, preach the gospel to them and call them to repentance. A couple more verses before we stop for this morning. Philippians 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, that's where we're coming to, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out, it's a present tense, ongoing action, your own salvation with fear and trembling. Otherwise, you're going to work out your own salvation by always obeying with fear and trembling before the Lord. It's God that works in you, both to will and do of His good pleasure. He will do a good work. He will bring forth His promises and bring all these things to pass in your life. Now, the scripture we began with, we need to bring it up again. This is the way you live your life. If you don't live your life this way, you're in error. Proverbs 23, 17. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. You walk in the fear of the Lord, you won't walk in sin. You walk in the fear of the Lord, you won't walk in the ways of the world. You walk in the fear of the Lord, you'll be ready to resist all those temptations, not give place to the devil. You walk in the fear of the Lord, you're not going to make excuses, cast the word behind your back, try to choose your own thing, let pride kick in, on and on and on. The I, 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 me, me, me takes over. <laughs> you're in trouble. No. You need to set yourself. You're going to walk in the fear of the Lord from the time you get up. Put it on your nightstand or whatever. The fear of the Lord all the day. Aha, this is where I'm starting out. I get up in the morning. It'll be a good reminder for you. 
Ezekiel 12, 13, last scripture we looked at this morning. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What's the conclusion of this whole deal? Fear God. Keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Sums it all up, doesn't it? Boy, if we don't have the fear of God, we've gone nowhere. And look at all these things. If you get all these things and put them all together and you see the fear of God working in your life and you're carrying all this out, you're going to see great blessings come. You keep his commandments, that's the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment. That's right. With every secret thing that nobody else knows but you. Whether it be good or whether it be evil, remember, we are, we are going to be judged and get a, things are going to happen. We're going to see the effect of them for whether we do good or we do bad. So God wants us to fear God and keep his commandments. You do these things. You carry out all these things. It'll change your life. It'll, you won't be walking in sin any longer. You'll be seeing God's blessings come. It'll be well with you. Like we saw just a couple of those. Tonight we're going to talk about all the blessings and the great results that are going to happen when you walk in the fear of the Lord. We have a list of 50 or so of those that we'll be going through tonight. Praise God. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the word of God that brings revelation that I must be in the fear of the Lord always, all the day long, I see the conclusion of the whole thing is fearing God, keeping His commandments. That is my duty. I understand. Having the fear of God is understanding God is the judge. His word is the truth. When I obey, I'll be blessed. If I disobey, curses will come. I thank you that I am going to come in line with the word of God that I have heard this day, be a doer of the word, so that I have the fear of God and I will walk in God's ways. I will see his blessings. I will not walk in sin. I will have a perfect heart. I will be walking uprightly. I will see God manifest himself and bring great blessing in my life because I walk in the fear of the Lord. I will be a doer of this word. And I thank you. There'll be much fruit. And I will set it from this day forward. I will be in the fear of the Lord all the day long. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Father, I thank you that every Christian, wherever they are, who hears this message, will understand how important this message is and how they must come in line with the Word of God to be right with Him. Thank you, Father, for each one taking hold of it, doing the Word, and there'll be much fruit as the body of Christ will come to the place of walking in the fear of the Lord all the days of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.